Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. And what can I say? I finally saw John Farrell's shot for shot CGI photorealistic remake of The Lion King. And having to see the entire film from beginning to the middle all the way up to the end. It's like the original film didn't exist. Yes, the 1994 film that was basically a take on Hamlet. It had its controversies, you know, claiming that it's it's like Kimba the White Lion. I mean, there is a controversy about the the scene where Simba just lays on onto the cliff and then suddenly all these uh, flowers you know going straight up into the sky which says the word sex on it but it's supposed to be SFX the movie that actually became the highest grossing film of the entire summer of that year alone celebrating its 25th anniversary had been re-released several times even in 3D it's loved by many critics around and it was considered to be an animated classic what does this version have to prove is that it's just like 20 years ago that Gus Ben Saint, who directed movies like Drugstore Cowboy, all the way until Go Will Hunting, which Robert Williams won the Oscar for, to do a remake of an Alfred Hitchcock classic that was based on a novel called Psycho, with John Farrow's best friend, Vince Bond, playing Norman Bates. Now remember how bad that film was and how pointless and unnecessary that film turned out to be? The fact that we get to see Vaughn uh, masturbating while, while becoming a peeping Tom, uh, checking out uh, Anne Heche's brawl as Marion? It's ridiculous, man. I know, I know. I'm saying it exactly the same way that everyone else is saying it, but whatever. But that's the thing. Nobody asked for this. I wasn't really looking forward to it in the first place. I mean, yeah, I saw the trailer. It did look impressive, I'll be honest. But would I like the movie? I don't know. If it turns out to be alright, then who knows. But that's not the way I saw it. I also remember there was an article where, you're going to love this, but one time I did actually saw an article, which might as well be a clickbait article, where they actually said that they weren't going to put the most important song of the original film in Swahili language, Hakuna Matata. Yes, that's said by Timon and Pumba. And they weren't going to put that in the movie. Which I think that would be fucking bullshit. And by the way, it is in the movie. So I guess. What can I say here? It's it's a it's basically another cash grab for Disney's live action remakes. And I just saw Aladdin recently and Dumbo. But out of those films, and there's gonna be plenty more that come from I mean with the Lady in the Trap remake and Mulan, yeah, I forgot to mention Mulan, and yes, the the Little Mermaid for next year. I'm beginning to wonder 
what the hell is wrong with this company? I mean, yes, they've been a cash grab over the years. I know they have been. They've always been greedy. They, they've been owning everything that they take over. They, they bought a lot of companies now, even recently with Fox. That I'm beginning to wonder, does Disney even care about quality anymore? I don't know. It's hard to say, man. Because they have put out a lot of crap, too. Even in the past, like in the 2000s. Yeah, on the Disney Channel with Lizzie McGuire, Hannah Montana, and Hannah Montana, and the Jonas Brothers. All that shit. And they were also responsible for bringing Britney Spears, which is a timber fuckface. Yes, that's what I'm going to call him from now on. Yeah, just Timberlake. And, of course, Christina Aguilera. But I'll deal with Christina Aguilera, at least. I don't know. Well, I guess I'm going to describe one f some of the other things I forgot to mention in the original review of the 1994 version of The Lion King. Was that they did have some other funny moments I do love that I would have loved to mention, like for example, the the free hyenas, yeah, Gen Z, Bonsai, and Ed. You know, I, I love how they're just, you know, joking around and you know, they're like doing the the Mufasa. I mean that name just <laughs> that name just gets under my skin. Mufasa, Mufasa, Mufasa. Or even the scene where Scar uh, traps uh, Zazu and yeah, inside a a uh, skeleton type cage and this is where he forces uh, Zazu to sing all these other songs that that Scar loves and then then uh, <laughs> Zazu mentions uh, the name Bufasa and then Scar tells him not to say the name in his presence he's doing the same thing with uh, the hyenas he's saying what did you say and he and Bonsai just says, no, I just said, ¿Qué pasa? <laughs> In Spanish. <laughs> um, and all these other good memories uh, with with uh, Simba, just when he grew older, becoming the lion who would soon become king. And he's hanging out with Timon and Pumbaa, you know, having the good life, you know, trying to move on from what's happening in the past, that sort of thing. Um, yeah, before Nala came along and they got to know each other, they, they, sp spend they spend some time for a while together just hanging around uh, at the waterfall and all these other places, everything, before they begin to find out why did Nala came back. Just to find some help until Simba was there and, and was begging Simba to come back, you know, to uh, stop Scar from taking over. Uh, okay, I mean, of course, Timon actually said it best uh, during the song verse of the song "Can You Feel the Love Tonight." He actually says, during the last part before we got to it, Disasters in the air. That pretty much described this remake right there. That I'm reviewing right now. So, with further ado, the summary is going to remain the same. There are a few new changes here and there. And instead of having, well, there is an Ellen John song, but it's a brand new one. We have Beyonce Knowles, yes, who was, yeah, who was uh, a former uh, lead singer of of the group Destiny's Child. Yeah, she's now a solo singer. Which I'm sorry, but I don't get the appeal of Beyonce. 
even as an actress. I mean, granted though, she is a talented singer, don't get me wrong, but as an actress, she's terrible. I didn't like her in the movie Austin Powers and Gold Member. Maybe she was tolerable in Dream Girls, but she's still not a good actress. I hate her in the film Obsessed, which is a total ripoff of Fatal Attraction, like all the other ripoffs we had. Um, with Aris Elba and Ali Lauder from Varsity Blues. She was in every single film out there, like Cadillac Records or The Fighting Temptations that he did with Cuba Gooding Jr. Yeah, that was after Gold Member. Or any other. I mean, I don't understand the appeal of her. I mean, this is the same. This is the same girl who says that it, that she wants to change the word bossy because I'm the boss. Yes. Well, guess what, Beyonce? You're not the boss of me now, and you're not so big. Yes, I'm quoting the words from the song. Uh, that's actually the theme song to uh, Malcolm in the Middle, the TV show. <laughs> Now I know why life is unfair. Oh, God. Well, I guess there's one thing I'd like to ask here, was that at least they got James Old Jones to reprise the role of Mufasa, even though he sounds a bit stilted compared to his original performance, when he actually had more energy. That's because he's an old man. He's, he's in his 80s. When he did the voice of Mufasa, he was in his 50s. Older but wiser, he still has the energy. I just couldn't bite, and that's really sad, because, I mean, it's not his fault. He, he did the best he could. As opposed to the rest of the other actors, like Donald Glover, uh, she will tell Elja Four, I don't know if I said his name right, but whatever. She will tell Elja Four, Alfred Ritter, Billy uh, Eckner, along with Seth Rogen and John Oliver, John Candy, and all the rest. I mean, hey, they they're trying to do their best, but it just comes across as pretty bland. And as for the songs, I mean, some of them does kind of fit a little bit. I mean, it almost sounds very similar to the original, you know, which we had Jason Weaver singing the song, Oh, I Just Can't Wait to Be King. I Just Can't Wait to Be King. So it's similar to that. Or The Circle of Life from the beginning almost sounds similar, but it doesn't sound particularly right in, in this version. It, it's, it's just not strong enough. And Brie Prepared was pretty shortened, but in comparison though, Jeremy Irons uh, nailed that perfectly when he did the voice of Scar. And that song actually uh, was a little longer than what this version turned out to be. So. That's a shame. So some of them, so I, I don't know, man. They still have the score from Hans Simmer, who did the score for the original. We don't got to, um, the lyrics alone, yes, which was actually based on the lyrics that, that was done by Tim Rice, which Ellen John join in because he sang some of the songs but only the the one song that he did was for was at the end credits and that was can you feel the love tonight yeah, that's okay I mean I know I mean Lion King was very popular for a long time remains so I mean they had a musical too just like Aladdin and Beauty and the Beast had. 
and they have Broadway musicals based on their adaptations. I just wish Disney would, would just learn nowadays not to fuck with these classics. Sometimes she can take a good idea and, and just add something new, but just try to stay true to the source material without ruining it, without uh, destroying it. And I think this is exactly what they did here. And I just couldn't believe it. Just after John Farrell just did The Jungle Book a few years ago, yeah, and now I'm beginning to wonder if that film was a fluke. Which I think that's sad because the Jungle Book remake, I mean, there's been several adaptations of that. But I thought John Farrow did an amazing job adapting a, a, I mean, adapting the story that was based on the 1967 version. But he, he actually did some justice to it, adding, as he created more heart and soul to it and how strong it turned out to be. He sure didn't do it here with The Lion King, because it's totally heartless and soulless. No effort whatsoever. It's, it, it just comes straight out, out of a Disney nature film, which I know Disney's been putting a lot of that. Okay, well anyway. Sorry for the start of the beginning, but this is exactly how I felt when I saw it. So let's begin with the cast. It stars Donald Glover. Seth Rogen, Chi Well Terrell, Elja Fur, Alfred Witter, Billy uh, Eckner, John Kenny, Shadi White Joseph, John Oliver, Beyonce Knows Carter, Keegan Michael Key, Eric Andre, Florence Kasumba, Amy Sedaris, Penny Johnson, Gerald, Phil Lamar, even Chance the Rapper, <laughs> and James Earl Jones. It's written by Jeff Nafelson, that's based on the original Lion King, by Irene McChi, Jonathan Roberts, and Linda Warburton. And it's co-produced and directed by John Furrow. Here we go. Part 2. <laughs> the movie begins set in the Pride Lands of Africa. A pride of lions rule over the animal kingdom from Pride Rock. That's where we meet King Rufasa and Queen Serapi with their newborn son Simba that's being presented to gather around the animals with Fafiki the Mandrill, who's the kingdom's shaman and advisor. Which this is where he actually takes the fruit, but this time around, he takes the fruit, just opens it up, and just just puts it onto his forehead. And yes, he even sneezes. This time, he didn't put any sand on his face. So he takes the cub and just lifts it up in the air, just as the the sunlight uh, shoots down on him where all the other animals you know all gather around kneeling through the circle of life then the next you know we see uh, all the mice you know wandering around so it was being caught by Scar but Scar was the one who didn't didn't make it into the uh, the circle of life um, to see the presence of of Simba. I mean, yes, because just when the Zazu, yeah, the home, the major Damo hornbill, just came and just to find where Scar is, and then Scar was ready to eat him. Just when Simba arrived, and well, he was very. I mean, yes. You know the story. Scar is upset, jealous that Simba will soon become king after Mufasa is gone, and he and he wants to become king so that way he could take over. Anyway, 
Mufasa explains to Simba as he became a young cub that that sooner or later once you become king you're going to take over the entire pride lands of Africa but the only place you shouldn't go is the elephant's graveyard he also explains that that once we die we'll soon become grass which will be the food for the antelopes which I know they go around eating antelopes too as opposed to zebras yeah. well that's when the, um, of course they were playing a game you know tricking Zazu so that way you know, Simba can catch him until he gets a report that the hyenas are on the loose on the elephant's graveyard but, so Mufasa had to go right away but tells um, Simba to stay here because you want to get into bigger trouble so what, what happens was yes he goes around telling Nala to go straight into the elephant's graveyard but he has to join in with Zazu and this is where they have to sing the song or oh, I just can't wait to be king yeah. they did it differently in the movie yeah I, uh, only this time Zazu didn't get uh, <laughs> didn't get crushed by a rhino he actually uh, <laughs> got caught up in the sky with all these um, I think all these uh, bees or some or flies yeah I think all these flies or so well you get it so they they escaped you know yes they're like playing around you know pinned them so that in the original of course <laughs> till they finally made it into the elephant's graveyard where they're being caught by Free spoiled hyenas, which is only this time it's Zenzi, Kamari, and Azazi. Yes, which hard to believe, but Kamari and Azazi were based on Bonsai and Ed, so now they can speak. So instead of being two uh, speaking hyenas with one just making all these noises and stuff, well, now we have three hyenas. We can speak, and and they're as goofy as they could be. Only Shinzi is like not only the leader, but he's the strongest one. Wow, what a change! So they're going around attacking Zazu, along with Simba and and Nala. And yes, Simba does the war until <sighs> Mufasa came along, and that's where we hear his war. And, that, and he goes around attacking those hyenas. There are also a lot of hyenas joining in too. And they're about to watch. And they're going to be ready to attack, uh, you know, them as well as, uh, well, Mufasa, but not really. And yes, Mufasa did warn these hyenas, if you ever attack my son again, you're going to get it. And then, that's when... Mufasa decided to take uh, Sasu along with uh, Simba and Nala all the way straight home where he tells Zazu to take Nala home to where she comes from and then and this is where Mufasa explains to Simba about what he did that he disobeyed him oh and I forgot to mention one scene before he he begins to explain to his son was that there's actually a big lion paw print just as Simba passes by that's in the original film by the way so for those uh, who have seen this scene in the remake because I know people probably have seen it already even in the trailers which I thought that was pretty iconic though because it also shows that yes he's gonna be big he's gonna end up becoming exactly like his father. I mean that is an important uh, iconic scene which sad to say they had to use it in this version. Thanks a lot for bro. Anyway so he was disappointed with what Simba just did because Simba wants to be brave 
just like him, but he was afraid that he might lose him. So they just go around, you know, playing with each other and saying that they're pals, so on and so forth. And that scar um, set a trap for his brother Mufasa, along with his nephew Simba, because he was the one that tricked uh, Simba to go straight to the elephant's graveyard in the first place. He lures uh, Simba into the gorge, yeah, because that's where the hyenas had set a trap by letting all these stampedes of herds going all the way down into the gorge and just run as fast as they can which the hyenas will attack um, Simba and that's when Scar goes up there tricking the Mufasa and Zazu and then yes I mean this is the spoiler I'm saying all this stuff again, was that Mufasa went all the way down there to save his son Simba and put him onto the, the side of the cliff before he had to go all the way up top, you know, telling Scar to help him. But what does Scar do? He claws him and just says, long live the king, throws him out, and falls all the way down into his death. And then Simba came all the way down from the cliff, just as one uh, last uh, herd passes by, he spot his father lying dead on the ground. His scar tells uh, Simba, because he's lying of course, that, that he was the one responsible for Mufasa's death and tells him to run away and never return. And that's when he tells uh, the hyenas to kill him. So they chased him all the way down into the cliff and he, f he went all the way down trying to escape from, from these hyenas. And, and winds up going around into the desert where all these uh, vultures were yeah, flying around near the sun and about to go after Simba while he was laying down and before we get to see the outcast uh, Timon and Pumbaa you know, meat cat and the wild beast so as we speak they're trying to cheer Simba up after what just happened and this is where they gave the message Hakuna Matata which means no worries in Swahili and this is where you know since you know he wished that he wanted to change the past but he couldn't but just trying to make it into the future so he now becomes a whole different person just just having a good life you know eating some bugs in the jungle and, and just hang around with these two guys along with the rest of the animals you know, including antelopes and <laughs> and all these other um, types of creatures joined by and, and by the way some of them actually speak I couldn't believe it so everything was the best for Simba well at least it was you know just going around looking up on the sky you know at night you know looking at all these stars and this is where he explains about what Mufasa told him when he was a kid uh, when he was a cub you know that. Um, of course, Tum Timon and Pumbaa did explain, you know, how they became outcast. You know, in the original film, they actually did the best to actually censor that part, which I thought that was pretty clever. It was like he was about to say that actually rhymes with what he, what his um, insecurity was for Pumbaa was he was about to say fart and, he, and he's about to say it so it almost looked like Timon and Pumbaa were breaking the fourth wall where they where they said uh, hey Pumbaa not in front of the kids oh, sorry but in this version yes they actually said fart and he does fart yeah because the movie is PG so 
and seeing that we're living in, in PC culture here, that yes, I think it's okay to actually let the characters fart. Seriously, man. Whatever. So as Simba had grew older, you know, spending the good life, we begin to learn that, um, well, Scar had had took over the entire Pride Land, joining in with the hyenas, trying to spread some bad news about what happened to Mufasa and Simba. So now he becomes the rightful king. So he's he has to take over to actually have everyone joining by and having to get all the food that they want as well as water but but of course Scar is not doing a good job for that because he doesn't know how and he's not very smart you get it so Nala had to escape you know trying to disobey uh, Scar and try to find some help by trying to give some food and water that is until he spots Simba, already grown up, and yeah, they're just just when Nala was like chasing around all the animals, including Pumbaa. But hey, Simba noticed that it was Nala, and there you go. <laughs> and then you know, they fool around, they get to know each other through Timon and Pumbaa, and then that's when they they start the bursts of "Can you feel the love tonight?" Yeah, during sunlight. Yeah, I know. Well, then again, in the original film, it was already sunsetting. So there was still a bit of sunlight at the beginning, but then it was starting to sunset a bit. So there's a bit of, uh, of that. So some nitpick on that, <laughs> that level. But yes, it's supposed to be sunsetting in that particular scene, you know, where Simba and Nala were just... You know, playing around, you know, having fun, going straight into the waterfall, you know, making love, I mean, in a way. But deep down of it, they're best friends. But then next, um, Nala was trying to tell and explain Simba that you're the rightful king. But Simba doesn't want to come back because, well, he fought about it, but that was a long time ago. And he just felt like, well, it's not going to change anything. Because now that Scar is, is the king, well, what can he do about it? But he realized that he made a big mistake. And just when Wafiki had came, only to find out that Simba is alive, and he tries to help him, trying to uh, go back to the past, trying to find out who he really is. Gets a look at his reflection that may look exactly like his father, Mufasa, knowing that he knows about him. And that's where we begin to see, well, in this version, we only get to hear his thoughts. We just see the clouds up in the sky, but we don't really see Mufasa up there. And trying to tell him to remember who you are from your entire identity that you're going to become exactly like Mufasa you're going to become king so he begins to learn but then when he passes by he, he says please don't leave me so clouds uh, suddenly uh, crosses out and that's where he learns that now he's going to go back to where he came from to the pride lands to find out what Scar has been doing once he took over. You know, treating the, his mom like like crap and all that, and then that's when and they're trying to find a plan to actually stop uh, Scar and the rest of the hyenas from taking over. And also the explanation involving Mufasa's death. I mean, now that, now that Scar found out that Simba is alive, and so is the rest of of um, the entire families, <sighs> because it's the sequel that happened. I mean, yes. Now, when uh, Simba had a plan for Timon and Pumbaa to actually trick the the hyenas, you know, to 
to attack them so that way you know that way you know they'll be able to chase them around just get past all these hyenas around so Simba can go straight straight into the Pride Lands to go after Scar you're gonna love this because in the original film both Timon and Pumbaa was, was like doing a uh, a Hawaiian the song dance just to trick uh, the hyenas in this version you're gonna love this they put in a song I couldn't believe this a song from another Disney film which is Beauty and the Beast I'm like I was ready to say raw movie Timon what the hell man I'm just and just when he was about to say B R got chased <laughs> what the hell man but then later on they, they did start to beat the shit out of them uh, it's too bad they forgot the the mr. pig line so they had to change that um, yes Rafiki came with his stick and starts to beat the shit out of those uh, hyenas but he didn't do the the uh, kung fu type so boy that's disappointing Meanwhile, after we find out about the secret, which, yes, this is what Scar revealed, telling the rest of them, saying that that, Muf that Simba might be responsible for Mufasa's death, but it, in reality, it was Scar that did this. Scar was the one that killed Mufasa when he said the secret, and this is where we saw the, the flashback, and then this is where he attacks him, Yes, they added a few more dialogue in there, and, and then he says, murderer, because of what he did. And yes, that's when the entire, all these lions and all the rest just continue to start fighting, attacking, all the way until we lead to the battle of, of Scar and Simba. Well, this is before, before that, with the slow mos and all that, was that he tells... Um, scarred that I'm not like you and what should you do is say exactly the same way that Scar says it you know, run run away never return and he says very well your majesty but he's, I know he says it differently in this one just throws the sand on his face and then leads to that particular battle you know they they smack their faces here and there you know Clawing each other and all that until until Simba knocks uh, Scar all the way down into the pit and yeah where all the hyenas were ready to attack him because of what uh, what Scar said to them you know trying to trick uh, Simba you know lying to them saying that about what, what Simba had had found out. I mean, everything he says. Why should I believe you? All you said is is a lie. That sort of thing. So now that Scar has been finally uh, beaten and attacked by all these hyenas, you know, they finally ate him. Now it was time for for Simba to rise as the rightful king. And yeah, so he gets to do his war along with all the rest. I mean, they started roaring. And then, soon, sooner or later, we learn that now both Simba and Nala are king and queen, and are getting ready for their newborn cub joining by. Yeah, for the circle of life. Yep, I just explained the entire summary, like it did with my original review a few weeks ago, but for this version. Now, reportedly, from the budget of this film, is only roughly 250 through 260 million dollars that they put together into this particular project. And astonishingly, it's a box office smash, earning over one 
billion dollars worldwide. That money alone should have gone to Alita Battle Angel and Missing Link alone. It pisses me off when two films that are so much better than this unnecessary, pointless, soulless, heartless remake that they had to put together. Like, we just can't have anything. It's like we can't have good things anymore. It's all, The bad movies have to make more money than the good films. All of that alone. And I'm, I know, and I, I have to mention these two films because they're way better than this. Way better than Aladdin too, the new one. But no doubt about it, both the original Aladdin from 1992 and the original Lion King from 1994 are way better. Way better than this. I already said it already, guys. This is your warning. But for those who haven't seen this movie, well, don't bother. What's the point? When you already have the previous film as it is. I don't know, man, because I can't even find a positive feedback that I have what ha that I had to say about this movie. I don't know. I mean, maybe the the look of the movie looks as realistic as possible. I mean, they look like real animals coming to life. They could speak. The cinematography looks breathtaking for what it is. But what's the point? The story is the same. All shot for shot. They added a new, um, yes, they added some new points into the film, but they also forgot some of the other points. Because even they're trying to do their best not to make it look like a shot for shot remake, but I don't know, I think they're lying. As for the cast, well, I must have felt bad for James L. Jones as opposed to Alfred Wildard and and maybe some of the other good actors joining by. I mean, geez, they did the best they could. But I think they're just signing in for a paycheck. It was as boring and bland as they could be. I mean, maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe I might give some little credit to Seth Rogen and, and uh, John Oliver as opposed to Billy Eckner, but what's the point? I mean, no one could top uh, all the actors like Matthew Brovick, Jonathan Taylor Thomas, as well as uh, Maury Kelly, uh, as well um, Jeremy Irons, of course James Earl Jones. No one could top him either, but at least he came back. Alfred Riddler is not bad at, to join in, but it's. But again, no one can top all these other actors. I mean, there is no fucking way Beyonce could top Maury Kelly at all. And I know I'm repeating myself, but... But I don't care about Beyonce in this movie. I thought she was just... I thought she was just bad, you know? Just like some of her previous work. I mean, okay, maybe she was tolerable in Dream Girls, but but I just don't understand. And by the way, she added a new song in the movie too, called "Spirit." Not impressed. It, it took away from that other song that they were supposed to use, but whatever. Uh, the Ellen John song wasn't bad, I'll give you that, but still. I think I'm just going to say it. Just stick to the original 1994 film 
it's way better had a lot of pride heart and soul put together this person should be dethroned never to return and yes I'm gonna say this this is the worst movie I've seen and I saw the Pet Cemetery remake go figure and I know there's other bad films that came out this year okay and there's gotta be because I just couldn't believe I wasted my time with this well I mean this is totally deplorable here but Disney is still going to continue with more live action remakes and will never stop I mean now that the Lady and the Tramp remake is coming up this year and I, I wouldn't be surprised if it ends up becoming a joke meanwhile I just saw the trailer for the new Mulan for next year but I'm feeling very optimistic about it who knows because it's probably going to end up being a standalone uh, warrior film. Probably might st stay true to the source material or something. Because I know they're going to do some major changes on that. I mean, it does look impressive though, I'll give you that. And don't get me started on The Little Mermaid. I mean, already with the cast controversy of, of Ariel now being played by a black girl. I wouldn't even be desired to watch that. Disney really needs to start making good movies again. I mean, anything that's good, original, and definitely uh, leered the audience in, hoping that they will enjoy it no matter what, instead of making all these boring, lifeless remakes out there. I mean, come on, Disney. You own everything now. Come up with better scripts. Original ideas, okay? Enough. You're supposed to be the house of mouse right there. But now you're becoming a cash cow. And you always have been ever since. All greedy. It's like you have the power in the world. And we can't stop it. Sorry, I can't believe I'm saying all this stuff, but it's true. I mean, just go see the movie Toy Story 4, and that's a way better film to check out. And that film deserved to be the highest grossing film ever to make more than The Lion King and Aladdin alone. So this is like a public service announcement. Be warned. So anyway, that's the new Lion King that John Farrow had did a shot for shot remake for. I mean, I can't believe this guy can do no wrong, but this time he totally blew it. I give it, you know what, fuck it. I'm going to give it one star. Just for the, uh, just so I can deal with the visual effects and the score and maybe a few vocal performances, but the, but everything is lack. No points. So that's my message here. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later, much later. Bye.